pups begin to explore on their own at one month old. Coyotes can be either solitary, like fox, or social and exist in family groups, like wolves. Well, coyotes aren't grouping up in the same way that they are in some of the western areas. The groups or packs, if you wish, are much more likely to be a family group with one age class, maybe with an individual a year older. We do know that uh, animals born in a particular year, some of them, usually a female, may stay the following year and help raise the pups of the next year. But to have a pack in which there are several year classes where animals may stay with a pack for three or four years, we don't seem to see that, although I must confess that we do not have good data on that. And it's another one of those areas where there's still a reason perhaps for a lot of research to be done if we're interested or think it's important to know about that question. For most of the East, the populations are exploited, they're hunted and trapped, and it seems from what I know about some of the coyotes elsewhere that it's only in those areas such as national parks and other protected areas, suburban, urban areas, uh, that coyotes start to develop these packs that uh, include animals from different year classes in the pack. Left to themselves, they may do that here also. In one of the more remote parts of the Adirondacks, there was some evidence of pack formation. We know that coyotes across the country will follow somewhat the same social pattern as wolves if they are not exploited. But they seem to be more adaptable than wolves in that they can survive and do well even in a more, shall we say, fragmented society where there are individuals and pairs and uh, perhaps packs consisting of just young of the year until dispersal occurs. It's probably been one of the reasons for the success of the coyote. You've been able to withstand the uh, fragmentation of what may have been its, its normal social structure better than the wolves. At around this time, dominance within the litter is established. High-ranking individuals have difficulty in initiating play with siblings. These and possibly other behavioral differences may predispose a pup to disperse from its natal group in early winter. Early dispersal is linked to an increase in mortality. Young of the year that remain with the alphas have an increased chance for survival. Behaviorally, eastern coyotes are less aggressive toward their mates, have greater tolerance of litter mates, and are generally more social than western coyotes. Northeastern coyote social organization may differ from westerns for several reasons, perhaps due to habitat influence, larger body size, hybridization, or high use of large prey. Coyotes frequently excavate abandoned badger or fox dens, which are often reused year after year. Coyotes typically dig and use many dens and will move pups if the den is disturbed. Pups may also be moved due to parasitic infestation.
In Yellowstone, the wolf reintroduction has meant many things to the coyotes. The wolves have cut the coyote population in half. Coyotes now take advantage of rock dens rather than just digging dens in a hillside. Rock dens deter wolves from digging out coyote pups to kill them. Coyotes have also learned to run to the road when wolves are in the area. Additional illustrations of the differences between eastern and western coyotes include differing dental development and physical traits. Eastern coyote pups are more leggy than western coyotes of the same age. Coyotes, the less social canid, fight more and play less earlier in life than do wolves but fighting occurred in significantly higher relative frequency in western coyotes than in eastern coyotes. So eastern coyotes are somewhat socially between wolves and western coyotes. Drastic changes in ecosystems have been linked to carnivore extirpation or control. For example, managers have reduced carnivore numbers to keep ungulates at artificially high levels for recreational hunting. Yet overabundance of white-tailed deer have been shown to reduce numbers of native rodent species, cause declines in understory nesting birds, obliterate understory vegetation in some forests, and even eliminate regeneration of the oak canopy. In many ways, you can kind of divide the effects of wolves on coyotes into kind of two bins. One is the effects on their behavior and the other is the effect on their population demography. The effects on behavior are varied, you know, like coyotes, although their pack sizes are much smaller because they're just reduced by sheer killing, they tend to travel together in a group much more often and their safety in numbers. They've moved their dens closer to roads, which is kind of a safe haven where wolves don't frequent as much. They, they're just very wary. They don't go out there and forage in the open anymore, especially around the core area of wolf territories, because they'll be killed. Demographically, uh, of course, there's been huge increases in mortality rates. The wolves kill anywhere from 25 to 35 percent of the adults every year, and there's been a complete shift, too, in their reproductive strategy. So they're trying to take as much as they can from wolf kills and convert that into producing more pups. So believe it or not, uh, litter size has gone up a little bit, but uh, coyote pup survival has doubled and, and nearly tripled in some years. Even though the mortality rates are much higher from wolves, they're producing more pups. And what we're seeing is a response to heavy mortality pressures. Compared to their body size, they really have an inordinately small territory size. Compared to a wolf, it's only three times larger. They have a 15 to 20 times larger territory size. Well, before wolves were reintroduced, it was about 10 square kilometers. And now that wolves have been reintroduced, it's uh, shrunk. It's more like seven square kilometers. <laughs> 